Hey guys, we're continuing with muscle energetics, the use of energy by muscles in the whole body today with a discussion of aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. You might know aerobic and anaerobic from biology, aerobic with oxygen and anaerobic without. But when we start talking about the mitochondria, we're looking at a big difference in the amount of energy that can be made through ATP between the two. So we start off with aerobic respiration, at rest or with light activity. If you think about it, at rest makes sense. You know, you're sitting in class, you're taking notes, you're in front of your computer. You're not doing very much. But aerobic exercise is considered part of this light activity, including distance running. And let me tell you, by the end of a marathon, that's 26.2 miles. It is not light activity. It is puke feeling, things dripping, exhaustion. Um... It's still considered aerobic exercise. There is a point with long distance running like that where you do get into fat stores. If you ever were to take a class in exercise nutrition or in even a biochemistry class, it may look more in detail of when metabolism kicks over from this use of glucose to fat burning. Glucose runs out. Just like anything else, you got about 24 hours of it for normal activity stored in your body, but you burn through it a lot more quicker when you're active. So your body has a backup plan. What we're looking at today is more normal metabolism when glucose is available. We say glucose to you 10 million times in bio. If we don't eat glucose, what happens? Your body makes it out of other molecules. So you've always got glucose, even if you're not literally sucking down sugar. Think about that. We're not like Mmm, glucose for breakfast. Your body handles that for you. So at rest or with light activity, you're breaking down glucose. That's probably for most of us what we're doing right now. Mitochondria take care of this. They're the powerhouse of the cell. This requires oxygen. That by definition is aerobic. This is nice. This is nice because it makes up to 34 ATP molecules. And I say that once and one of my runners raises his hand and goes, Mr. King said 36. I said, he's right also. If you look at the picture I included, two ATP molecules are made as glucose is turned into pyruvate before the molecules ever enter the mitochondrion. And then 34 are made in the mitochondrion. So if you count the two outside, your total is 36. If you put those as a separate process within the mitochondrion, you're making 34. Both answers are right, and I would never make you pick between 34 and 36 on a test. I'd be like, two. 20, 34, 612. It's not going to be close. 34 and 36 are both considered correct in this. If you look at the equation, it should look familiar for a couple reasons. We talk cellular respiration in bio. We talk our friend glucose. We're going to combine it with oxygen and give off carbon dioxide and water vapor. I'm not sure if you've had anyone else for chem, if you've heard this, but if you had me for chem, you might recognize this as a combustion equation. Combination with oxygen to yield carbon dioxide and water, it's very close. Your body is almost literally burning glucose with this reaction. I thought that was pretty cool. It is a balanced chemical equation. It does require oxygen. And since I'm a chemistry teacher too, I have to go through that. It's below the picture there with the mitochondrion showing the release of energy as a product in that equation too, which is what we want. We want to be able to make energy through what the mitochondria do. If you look below that picture of the little pickle mitochondrion, um, there are definitions of the terms that are given on that picture. You do not need to know them. They're typed in black on your notes copy because they're always on the notes copy. That's not something I've given you. The red notes are what I'm providing for teaching online. The black notes would have been in your packet. I don't care if you know what acetyl coenzyme A does. In AP Bio, you will. In a college biochem or college bio class, you would. For you, I want you to see what they are because I've said this before. I feel bad if I put in a picture and don't tell you what the stuff in the picture is. You might recognize citric acid cycle from bio. You might even recognize osmosis and electron transport. Those were big ideas, but we don't have the time to go through them all in here now. So that was our aerobic respiration. It's not sweat, it's liquid awesome. There we go, aerobic respiration time. Now with anaerobic respiration, and I try to avoid this. This is strenuous activity like sprinting. 
Every summer when I'm playing softball and I have to run the bases, our third baseman ripped into me last year because I run so much, but I would run around the bases and then hang off the fence because I thought I was dying because my legs don't do that. I'm not slow. I'm just unwilling and bad things happen when I sprint like I feel terrible. Uh, when you have these bursts of strenuous activity, sufficient oxygen isn't available. And that's what my body's not used to. My body's not used to that, oh no, run. In this case, the goal is not to do respiration efficiently. It's to do it quickly. You know, if you've got homework for a class and you're like, oh, I have four study halls today, blah, blah. It's really good. But when you realize five minutes before class starts again, oh no, it's done. Oh, it's done, but it's ugly. Aerobic respiration is when you have time to do the homework and you put the effort and you get a lot of results. Anaerobic respiration is when it's done, but it's dirty. A anaerobic respiration doesn't take the time, doesn't combine with oxygen, and for every glucose molecule that was giving you a 34 or 36 ATP, with aerobic respiration, it pops you out two ATP molecules with anaerobic respiration. It does it quick, it does that dirty, and it's done. But you've got your two ATP molecules that you desperately need right at that second. It's not your ideal yield, but it serves the purpose. You burn through glucose very quickly with anaerobic respiration. Literally, if you look at the chemical equation, you tear glucose in half. 6, 12, 6 for my coefficients turns into 2 times 3, 6, 3. Rips in half. This compound is originally called pyruvic acid or pyruvate. I, as a chemist, would call this pyruvic acid because there's no charge. If you know from chemistry, the A-T-E ending has usually a negative charge on an ion. I'd have to take one of those H's away to technically make it pyruvate. But biochemists are like, we call it pyruvate. I think it's just because it's less letters. So you go from glucose to pyruvate. But here's the problem. Your body then converts pyruvate into a little compound called lactic acid. If you've heard about lactic acid buildup and what it does, it's what makes your muscles feel like garbage. Right away, that burning, terrible sprint feeling in your muscles, um, it's ugly. And it also can do something, it also makes something called delayed onset muscle soreness that can make you sore and miserable up to two days later. When your body makes this lactic acid, it's not garbage. It's temporarily pretty bad, but your body will take it to the liver, where it can be remade into glucose because... Chemically, it's still the same. It's still half a glucose. Unfortunately, till it can get there, it can also build up in your muscles. If you sprint or work out every day, you get more used to it. Your body's better able to deal, just like your body makes more mitochondria to deal with aerobic exercise. But if you're making that lactic acid faster than your body can take it to the liver, clean it up, and send it back, you've got buildup. And exercise-wise, and just life-wise, you're probably looking at some soreness, discomfort, fatigue coming up. So that's my thoughts on respiration. And there you go.